there's this new sermon series that, um, that birthed out of this, and it's called As Witnesses. And the main scripture that we're going to be focusing on, building this, this series on, is in Acts 1.8, when the Holy Spirit descends upon the, uh, the apostles and says, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Uh, this is huge. Um, I don't know if you guys seen this movie uh, uh, with Jim Carrey, Liar Liar. It's uh, it's an older movie. He's, he, he, uh, Jim Carrey is he's quite the character. But in this movie, uh, he's he 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 can't lie. His son has a birthday wish, and his son you know wishes for his dad to uh, to be truthful, to only speak the truth. And and Jim Carrey, he's a lawyer, and he's like he's going crazy because he can't lie, and he's and, and he's like stuck all the time. And and uh, and I remember um, it's like he's in. Uh, this image kind of came to me as I was preparing this because as, as witnesses, like the main, the main role as a witness in a trial is to speak the truth, is to, is to present um, something truthful in, in a case so that can either send, uh, say that whether someone is, is guilty or, or not guilty, and, and, and that witness has a huge responsibility to, uh, to bear the truth, to bring the truth. They even make them swear, you know, an oath and things like that, that they will tell nothing but the truth. And in this movie, it was just, I was just reminded, like, you know, Jim Carrey trying to, you know, tell the truth. Uh, it was, he was trying to lie as a lawyer, but he couldn't. And he, was, and, and he could only tell the truth. And I was like, man, imagine if that happened to us in our Christian faith, where we have to actually be out in the world telling people the truth, how uncomfortable it makes people feel. Because sometimes it doesn't really align with their lifestyle. Sometimes it doesn't really even align with our own lifestyle. If we were to actually go in and deep, dive deep into this and, and see that sometimes our life isn't reflecting the truth. And the sermon is designed to equip you, to teach you, to encourage you as witnesses of Jesus Christ. If you are a believer, if you are in Christ, if you have died to yourself and said, God, come into my life and live through me. I want to walk with you. I want to be a disciple. I want to, you know, get to know you more. As a disciple, we are called to be witnesses in the world. In the context of this, why it says Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria, it's pretty much saying even in places that you don't feel comfortable in, you are still called to be a witness. Even in places that you don't want to go in, you're still called to be a witness. It's not just to be a witness in your own church. It's not just to be a witness in your own home, but to be a witness in every place that you have influence, in every place that you walk into, you are called to be a witness. But what does that look like? How does that, uh, you know, if we're using this metaphor, this analogy of, uh, of you know, you know a, a trial, a case where someone is being charged or accused of something and you're a witness, you, ha- you have a responsibility to testify, to bring the truth. Just like how we have witnessed and we have experienced Christ, we have a responsibility to testify and to tell the truth of God and how good he is and what he's done in our life. We have a responsibility to set people free from bondage, from shame, from condemnation, from sin. You and I have that responsibility to testify of God's grace and his goodness. And this is a huge responsibility. So we're going to be looking at, at this for the next couple of weeks and kind of just, you know, uh, dissecting this, this portion of Scripture, but not only this, and we'll look at more Scripture as well. But one of the things that... that um, that God really spoke to me was to not be a bystander, but to be a bearer of truth. See, I'm not very good at being on the sidelines. Well, you know, football just started this t- tonight and or today. And, you know, even when I'm watching football, I'm like, man, like, if only I could get in there, you know, and, and be on the field and playing. Or I can't watch a soccer game. I can't be on the sideline watching a soccer game. I need to, I need to play. I need to get in the action. That's me. Like, I'm, I, I'm just wired that way. I need, I need to dive in. I can't just watch I need to get in the action. And I feel like that's what God is calling us here tonight. What he's calling you is that you can't be a bystander anymore in your workplace, in your, in your homes, in your, in your schools. You can't just be a bystander getting by with people walking by you every single day and they don't have no idea that you're even a Christian. And then when, you know, they find out there, it's like, whoa, like, I didn't know. And how long have you been there for? We're not called to be bystanders. We're called to be bearers of truth or what? Witnesses of truth. Carriers of truth. Leaders. Bringers of, of, of good news that you and I have. 
It says uh, in, in, in Acts 1.8, to go into all of Samaria, into Ju- Judea, into, Sam- uh, into Samaria, into all the ends of the earth. Pretty much saying there's no corner that you're not called to go to. I remember when, uh, when we uh, decided to come up here to Fort McMurray and, 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 and people were like, why, why are you going to go there? Why are you going to do that? And, uh, and really, God is, has called you to go wherever there's people. If you're ever looking at God, you're sending me somewhere, send me anywhere. Well, a good indication that he's sending you there is because there's people there. And there's people that need what you have. There's people that need to hear uh, the good news of God. So that's a good indication that, yeah, this is where God is sending me because there's people there. There's people that need to know Jesus. And we can't just be bystanders anymore. And see, here's the thing, though. We live in this society where everything is about my feelings, how I feel, how, you know, you offended me or, you, or, you know, I, I don't like that. That doesn't align with, with, with how I feel or what I'm thinking. That doesn't align with my lifestyle, and it hurts. But see, if we were to discover truth, rather than feeling, rather than feelings, it's, it's very different. See, when we look at Scripture, Jesus didn't say, I've come to what, bring, you know, you know, give you happiness and joy and all these nice things. Yeah, that is part of it. But he also said that there will be trials. He also said that there will be persecution. He also said that there will be, uh, you will have to face and run a race with perseverance because there are going to be attacks from the enemy. There are going to be challenges. There are going to be obstacles that we have to overcome. And sometimes those things that God is calling us to, our feelings will deny us from moving forward. Our feelings will deny us from reaching the places that God has for us. But if we begin to discover truth rather than feeling, we'll discover that there's victory and that there's hope in that, in those situations, in that mess, in those times where we feel alone, afflicted, there's truth. To discover truth, to, to digging into God's word and, and, and seeing what he, you know, standing and being, and, and, and knowing it. Because this is another thing. It's like we live in this age too where it's like everything now you can find on Google. Like, you, you need to find, you know, how to, how to you know, bake a, a, a certain type of cake. You can go on YouTube, you can go on Google, and you can discover how to, how to do all these things. The, the interesting part is that now when you're trying to, to, to talk to people, share people about your faith, they have a good understanding now where you're coming from. Why? Because they probably Googled it before. They have a, a, a decent amount of knowledge because it's so accessible now. Um, I just got this, this app the other day uh, that pretty much gives you access to, like, almost every single Christian book ever written. And, uh, and it's this big database that, you know, now I have access to. And it's just like at the click of a button, I can put in a word and it'll give me like 300 books on this one word. And it's like, you know, and then books of how to interpret this word in the Bible and things like that. And it's just, it's amazing how, how much access we have now by just at a click of a button. So when you're trying to tell people about your faith, if you don't know truth, how are you supposed to share what you don't know? If you have a surface level understanding of who God is and what his truth is, how are we supposed to share our faith? How are we supposed to talk about, to, to, to God about people when we are, ourselves are trying to discover even who he is? It is an ongoing process. It is a journey. It is, we, we are working every single day trying to understand and trying to discover more of, of who God is. But if we're not doing it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we're just waiting until we cut to Sunday to, to hear just a small nugget of truth, it won't sustain us for the rest of the week. It won't sustain us when we're on a Friday night and we're out with a couple of friends and, and someone is hurting, someone's broken, and they need some truth in their life. They need good news in their life. And we're there like, well, what do I say? Hey, let me take out my phone and let me Google it. What do I say when someone's going through this? Or someone's challenging you on, on your faith and, and you're trying to have a discussion and they and ask you something, a question about God and you're just like, uh, let me Google it. I don't know where to turn to. I don't know. It, 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 one of the things when, when I was in, in high school and I was kind of trying to discover different uh, you know, tr- trying to discover some meaning, trying to discover purpose. Like I, I, at that point, I didn't have a, I didn't have a relationship with God. I was discovering, I was kind of flirting with different things. I was looking into, you know, Buddhism and and, and Islam and and different things, trying to trying to find purpose and meaning, trying to find understanding. Like, why am I here? 
For those of you who don't know, like I lost my mom at a young age, and when you experience, you know, losing someone, you, you start asking these big questions of, you know, what's the purpose of life, and why are we here? Why, you know, do we just live to die? Like, what? Trying to trying to make sense of it all. So I was diving into different things, and and, and when I would ask my, my 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 friends who were who who said that they were um, Muslim, I'd be like, well, what do you guys believe in? Well, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't, no, no, no. What do you believe in? Well, I'm not supposed to be doing this, and I can't, you know, eat this. I can't drink. I can't. No, no, no. Like that's that doesn't tell me, you know, like anything about your faith, or or you know, you're just telling me what rules are in your faith, what you can and cannot do. See, a lot of times people in the world don't understand that Christianity isn't just about rules. That Christianity isn't just about what you can and cannot do or trying to live your life according to this. Actually, Christianity is so much more than that, that when you meet Jesus, you meet life. You have life. You have an abundance. You have joy. You have peace. You have hope. You have all these things that you can't find in the world, something that will sustain you to the end. In Jesus, you have a relationship with God, the creator now, through what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. People don't understand that because they don't, because they can't, you can't Google that. You have to experience that. They need to know truth. They need to discover truth. And in discovering all these things and these different religions and different ideologies and philosophies, the only thing I can come to is that everything is just empty. The only thing that had substance, anything that would fill me was God. And in that, it, it, it was crazy, like, you know, trying to discover. And I ended up even getting some of my friends to kind of question, like, oh, yeah, I wonder why do we do that? Because I'd be like, well, why do you guys do this? Like, why do you have to you know, point to this or do that. And, and they, they had no idea. They just did it because that's how they grew up. And they just followed along what their parents taught them. But they never went and discovered it on their own. It was just passed down to them. A lot of times, our own faith is just passed down to us. It was our parents' faith, and we just grew up like that. So we're in church now today just based off, you know, what our parents told us to do. And it was just became a habit. But we can't stop there. We have to continue searching more, discovering more, discovering more truth. D discover truth rather than a feeling, oh, this makes me feel good. Yes, a relationship with God will make you feel good, but that's not all. There's so much more than that. There's so much more to gain. It says in John 16, verse 13, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak of his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. But he the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you. Man, how many times do you talk to people in your workplaces, in your schools, and, and, and you know, people that you're friends with, people that you associate yourself with, and they're just like, oh, I just don't know what to do. You know, I have, I have this decision to make, and I, I don't know what to do. Oh, you know, I, should I put my kid in this school? Should I put my kid in that school? Uh, you know, should I, uh, sh 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 should I put them in this activity? Should I take this job? Should I, you know, buy this house? Should I, you know, make this purchase? Should I go to this place? Should I go here? Should I, should, should I go back to school? We have all these decisions to make that we're trying to do on our own. But if we allow the spirit of truth to come, he will guide us into all the truth, that we're, the places that we need to go. If we allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives to guide us into these, to make these decisions, they become easier to decipher whether this is from God or not. The truth will, will be revealed when we know truth, who truth is. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is truth. And these decisions that, you know, that come to light, like I, not too long ago someone asked me, um, you know, I, my, my kid, I, I don't know what school to put them in. And I was like, and they're like, you know, I'm struggling with this. I don't know what, 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 what school to put my kid in. They need this, they need that. And the first thing I asked was like, well, have you prayed about it? Have you taken time to actually pray and allow God to say, you know, guide me in, 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 in where it is that you want us to go, to lead us? In all decisions, it's, it, it sounds easy, but in reality, it, you know, you have to actually practice it. You actually have to work for it. You actually, you actually have to take time and say, God, I need to spend time diving into this to know that you are leading me in this place. A lot of us, sometimes we don't do that. Why? Because it's uncomfortable. The truth is uncomfortable sometimes. But see, it's not truth that needs to change. It's, it's we that need to change. One of the things that um, when I look now in, in society and, and I look at schools and, you know, things that they're teaching kids and things like that, it's, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> to the world, it's not. 
to the world that's, you know, oh, you know, everyone's this and that, and, you know, you can choose this, you can choose that, and, you know, it's all good. But when we look at Scripture, it says something else. When we look at the Word of God, it, it says something different. And there is, there is that fear of, oh, man, if we actually preach what the Bible said, we might offend someone. We might make someone feel uncomfortable. We might hurt someone in the process. But the truth is, God's word is true today as it was yesterday, as it is today, and will be forevermore. The Bible hasn't changed. People have changed. The Bible hasn't. The way that people preach now and the way that people teach, you know, has changed, but the message is still the same. The way that people have, you know, presented themselves that, you know, this is Christianity and this is how it's supposed to be, actually, that hasn't changed the Bible still tells us how we're supposed to live and the standard that God has called us to, that hasn't changed. But the way that we see, oh, it's okay to do this now because society is doing it. It's okay to, you know, go here because, you know, that pastor is doing it and all these things. And they've kind of used scripture to kind of conform to their ideas, to their desires, to their wants. That makes them feel, makes them feel comfortable in the process losing the truth. In the process, distorting the truth. Why? Because if they were to live the truth, it would be uncomfortable. They wouldn't be as popular. They wouldn't be as cool. They wouldn't be as trendy. And the sad part is, is that we begin to water down what Jesus died for. We begin to water down the truth of the gospel that has the power to set people free that has the power to, uh, to, to, to release people from bondage, to heal, to see the miraculous in their life. I know that there's, there's a whole whack of things I can talk about, you know, different things that are, are so wrong and in, in, in what society is trying to make it seem like it's normal now and it's, 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 this is how it should be. And, you know, we were at a conference um, last week and and. and you know, what this lady says is true is like the reason why they have so much power like they do now in society is why is because they have become bearers of what they believe in and they make noise about it and they tell people about it and they stand up for what they believe in and they stand up for, you know, the, the, their values. But where are the Christians? Well, we don't want to offend anyone. Well, you know, we don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. Well, you know, I have a friend who, you know, if, 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 if they were to find out what I really, you know, want to say to them, then we might not be friends. Of course, there's ways of how to present it. The same way that Jesus did all the time with love. Like when he met that woman at the well and he knew that she was living in sin, that she, was, that she wasn't even supposed to be there. He wasn't even supposed to talk to her. Yet he still met her where she was at and still loved on her. And she met truth and it radically changed her life. There's still the Holy Spirit that will guide us into truth and allow us to know how to minister to people that are hurting, that are broken. Because a lot of times these people are standing up for things because of a past experience or, or something that led them to be where they are now. Honestly, if, if you talk to, to you know, people who are advocating for certain things in the world and you actually listen to their stories, you're like, man, like, I, I'm totally with you. Like, I, I totally agree. Like, that would be so hurting and so broken. But guess what? You don't have to fall into that lie of the enemy. You actually have hope. You actually have uh, a chance, an opportunity to be revived, to be restored, to be renewed, to be healed. You actually have an opportunity in Christ to be loved again and to be treated the way that you should be treated. You actually have an opportunity to be accepted the way that you want to be accepted and you don't have to go into doing other things to feel accepted or to feel part of society. God's family is there to support you, to, to love on you, even at your worst. But they don't know that truth. They haven't discovered it yet because some of us Christians have been too quiet on the sidelines, not being the witnesses that God has called us to be not being the witnesses that you and I need to be. And it's challenging. It is. Even for myself, because even from here, sometimes I won't share things because I'm afraid that someone might, you know, get offended here. But I can't. I cannot 
not speak what's in this. I can't shy away from this. And, you know, it was funny. Like, one, one preacher at that conference was really savage. He was just like, if you don't like this sermon, this is what he said there. He's like, if you don't like this sermon, then you can leave because I'm just preaching what's in the Word. And some people were like, oh, it's like, I was like, dang, mic drop. Because <laughs> it's true, because what he was saying to us pastors was just like a slap to the face. Because some of us have been too quiet. And it starts from us. It starts here. It starts now. If we're not equipping, if we're not being equipped, then what good is it? We're sending out, it's like sending out soldiers to the battlefield without any weapons, without any armor. Of course they're going to fail. Of course they're going to feel alone. Of course, of course they're going to feel abandoned. You know, I had a friend recently ask me, well, you know, I want a disciple. I want to, you know, I want to, uh, you know, tell people about Jesus at my workplace because I have influence. And I said, well, you know, let's go and, 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 and come to a Bible study. Come to a, a small group and start getting equipped. Start learning more. Start diving in more. And, and I, I honestly believe that this person has huge potential to reach many people for Christ. Why? Because of their faith, because of their trust. One of the things that I want to leave with you guys tonight is this. Yes, the truth is uncomfortable, especially when we have a hard time ourselves even believing it. But get this, in this uh, scripture, John 16, verse 13, it says, but we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. But in this, in, in this verse where it says, uh, God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth. What is the truth? What am, I, what, what am I talking about here? The truth is, is this, that Jesus came, he died on the cross for your sins and for my sins, giving us you know, reconciliation with God the Father, now giving us an access, a way, a door, opening the door to heaven now so that we can receive this gift. Of it's John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, whoever shall believe in him shall have eternal life. That's the truth. That's the truth that the world needs to know, that there is, there's forgiveness, that there is healing, that there is grace for you and I. But the truth is, isn't one of the things that, that, that I was struggling with when, when I was looking, I was like, man, sometimes I don't agree with some of this stuff. Like personally, like me, like sometimes I'm, I'm reading the scripture, I'm just like, man, it's so hard to, to, to actually, you, you know, believe in this. Because sometimes I feel like, God, where are you in this? Why are you letting this happen? Why are you letting that happen? Like, why can't you just, you know, uh, you know, when you hear about another shooting, why, why couldn't you just stop the bullet from, 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 from being released or, 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 or the gun being, uh, you know, faulty and, and that person doesn't have a gun and all these people will be saved? Like, I, have the, I, have, I struggle. I wrestle with these questions. God, why don't, why, why don't you intervene? And then God always just says to me, well, why don't you intervene? Why don't you step up? You see people hurting all the time. Why don't you do something about it? You know, we, we want God to, to always intervene when really he's called us to be the ones who are supposed to be, have the same power of that resurrected Christ from the dead. Go out and actually be those people that intervene. I, 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 I strongly believe that, if, you know, schools and, and things like that didn't take out what? The Bible, when what it, what it was found, a lot of the school systems were founded on this. If they didn't take this out, how different our schools would be right now today? Because what this preaches is love, and that everybody's welcome, and that everybody's accepted, that everybody has a place in God's family. This preaches not violence, not hate, not discrimination, but love. Would there be a need for people to to, to go and do these crazy things? Probably not. There wouldn't be abuse. There wouldn't be homelessness. There wouldn't be, you know, people uh, struggling with poverty because the church was supposed to, design, was, it was designed so that there would be none of that. So when I'm challenged with these questions and wrestling with God, God, is this, even, is this even true today? 
Well, yes, because now you're a bearer of truth. Now you're the one that knows Christ. You had this experience with Christ where he came and he met you where you're at and he saved you from what? Your life that was in shame and and, uh, condemned and and, and sinful and wicked and you were just uh, totally messed up and he took you out of that and he brought you to where you are today to give you life and to give you hope. Not so that you can just stay where you're at, but so that now you can go and bring hope and truth to someone else who needs it. To bring them out, to lift them out of that. But Christ has given you the opportunity to be uh, relieved from. That's the truth. That's, uh, but, but this, this word truth here, what it's, uh, but when you actually look in the Greek and what it means, it's actually saying that trust in the gospel. That's what the actual translation is of this word truth. It means trust in the gospel. Pretty much meaning even if I don't necessarily believe in this right now, I trust that God is who he says he is, that he died on the cross for me, so I'm going to do it anyways. And the revelation of it will actually become so real in your life that it's, it will become truth. It will become what, is, what God has, has done for you. And I, I, was, I was reading uh, the other day about these two Christians. Well, they used to be Christians. They were two big influencers in the Christian world. And, and they had a lot of influence. One was a, a worship leader. The other one was a, an author and, and a pastor of, of many books. And they came out not too long ago. It was like a month ago or two months ago now where they said that they, they've lost their faith. That they, they, they no longer uh, you, you know, consider themselves Christians and, and things like that. And I was just like scratching my head. I was like, well then, like, were they ever Christians to begin with? Like at what point did they stop trying to discover truth, because they both said that they stopped believing in truth. They stopped believing in, 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 in their faith. But at the same time, I, I, I question, I wonder, at what point did they stop trying to discover more about who God is? At what point did they stop trying to discover, stop having faith and trust in God, that even when you don't understand things, why they're happening the way they are, that you still trust the gospel, that you've still been saved from something, that you've still been saved from hell. And you've still, still been given, you know, you know, grace and love. At what point do you stop trusting in that? And, and, and you know, my fear is that in, in this world now where people are getting very intellectual because of the access that they have, in the world, they'll form really good arguments. And I've heard a lot of them. Some have even got me to go back into the word and discover, like, you know what, like this straight from the pit of hell. Because I need to go back to this and be reminded every single day that I need to deny myself, pick up my cross, and follow Jesus, even though sometimes I feel like, God, where are you in this? Where is your truth in this? Where is your love in this? But it's trusting the gospel, trusting in his word, trusting in who he says he is. And when I do that, I begin to discover the truth. I begin to discover who he is. And what he means in my life. To the point where I'm just like, yeah, I can't go back. I, 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 can't, I can't go back because I know what's waiting for me there. The only thing I could do is look forward and continue moving and discovering more about who God is in my life. And every single day I'm on that journey just like you and I are. There's never going to be a point where we can put the Bible down and we read it like in any other book and say, okay, I'm done. I know everything. I've read it from front to back and, you know, now I can collect dust on the shelf, put it back in the bookshelf. No, this needs to be every single day that we discover more and more about who God is. Every single time I open the book and I, and I, and I read a, you know, and I'm doing a Bible study, I'm preparing for it. And then I'm like, I, I spend hours on it. And then I go and, and I share with some of the guys that we meet on Tuesday nights and, and I'm sharing and all of a sudden someone says something that I missed. It's God saying, I still have something new, something fresh for you every single day. I can read the same portion of scripture a hundred times and think about, okay, I learned it, it's all there now. And all of a sudden, some random person comes and looks at it from one different angle and says, oh, then this speaks so much truth to me. Because there's so much truth in this, in his word, that we need to continue discovering it daily. Getting what? Our daily bread. When we stand to our feet, I'm just going to ask Amanda to come up just for time's sake. Like I said, as witnesses, we have a great responsibility. As witnesses of God, as disciples of God, we have a great responsibility to be bearers of truth. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's going to be uncomfortable. Sometimes it's going to be messy. 
But aren't we glad that we have the Holy Spirit that's going to guide us if we ask? The Bible talks about how the truth will set us free. Well, that's true. Jesus will set us free. Jesus is truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus made these extremely bold statements. And some people listened, some didn't. Some stayed, some left. Some people just didn't pay too much attention to it. But the ones that stayed at the foot of the cross to see, if is this guy really who he says he is? Is this guy actually the son of God? They got to see the resurrection. And all those who left didn't. And then later on, Jesus appears to many of them and, and they finally realized this guy is who he says he is. He's the truth. He's, he's the word and flesh. He's God. He's the son of God. Sometimes I got to look back and and remind myself, I preached a sermon not too long ago on a Sunday morning of, you know, looking back at your past to see where God is taking you out of, to know where he's bringing you into, or know where he's taking you to. Sometimes I got to look back and say, God, are you even real? And that's, I, I got to look back to my life and just look at my, you know, if I were to put, flash my life before me, like on a, on a, on a video and, and watch it from front, you know, from the beginning to the end, I can see that God was in every single scene. Every step of the way, even when I thought this time, this chapter of my life was really dark and, and lonely, actually God was there the most. It's his truth. It's that he is who he says he is. That he's with you every single step of the way. That he's for you, that he's not against you. That he calls you son, that he calls you daughter. That he calls you a child of God. It's his truth that we have to hold on to. If we are to be witnesses in the world, we got to begin to soak in his truth daily on the level that sets us apart from the world. Because there are some people, some very smart people who know the Bible, who know the Bible, they've read it, so they think they know it. And then they'll read scriptures and they'll quote scriptures to to you and I and you'll we'll be like what where does it say that and then we'll go and look and be like what what does this mean <laughs> we have no idea how, you know what God is actually saying in the context of it all and things like that that's why it's so important to daily soak in God's truth God's word and to begin to discover it for ourselves I want to just close your eyes I just want to pray for you guys I just want to just do a general prayer tonight. You know, a lot of us here are starting up school or we're starting new jobs or we're going back to, you know, a new routine. Going to, starting a new routine, starting to, to, to influence people again in, in certain capacities in certain places. Some of us have positions where, you know, we get to see a lot of people throughout our day. We either serve someone, we either teach we either get to, you know, uh, be in a setting where there's other people around and, and we get to talk to them and minister to them. I just want to pray right now that God just begin to download into you just his truth, his word, his, his spirit. His... Give you words of wisdom and knowledge of what to say. But at the same time, that as you're on this journey, that you will discover more and more who Jesus Christ is in your life and discover truth in your life. Life changing, life transforming truth. Father God, thank you for this group of people, Lord. Thank you that you call them children, Lord. Thank you that they're the head and not the tail. Thank you that they are victorious in you, God. Thank you that you have called them, Lord, to be witnesses, Lord, to all the ends of the earth. Father, you have given each and every person here in this room tonight, God, skills, personality traits, character traits, God. 
You've given them uh, tools, God, of, of how they can be an influence to other people around them, God. But right now, more than ever, I just pray that you begin to give them your spirit, the spirit of truth in their lives, Lord. That they'll be able to discover who you are, God, and that what they find out in who you are, God, that they can now share the world and testify of your greatness, God, and testify and speak of your goodness, Father. God, there's people that we even know right now that are struggling right now in their faith, God, that are struggling right now in their relationship with you, that are struggling in their, in, in their life just asking questions. Why are we here? What are we doing here? God, I pray that you'll use each and every one of us to minister to those people, God, in, in the coffee shops, at schools, at workplaces, God at restaurants, Lord. I pray that you just begin to use us to minister to people, God, that are hurting, that are broken, that need, Lord, to discover truth because they're searching, they're doing things to try to discover meaning, trying to discover acceptance and purpose, God. But we know that all this, God, can be found in you. Lord, we sang about it, but do we believe it? Lord, all, everything, victory can be found in you, Jesus, and what we have in you in the cross, God. We thank you for what you've done for us, Lord, and what you're going to continue to do in our lives, God. But allow us just to be bare of truth, bearers of your word, God. Allow us to be witnesses, God, out in the world, Lord, where we need it so badly, God, today. In a world that is hurting and broken, God. Allow us to stand and rise and to be witnesses, God. Lord, sometimes it's, it's messy, it's uncomfortable. Sometimes we put our own selfish this in front and say, you know, if I don't, if I say this to this person, it, it might offend them. God, allow, allow us to do things in love the way that you did it. Allow us to speak with wisdom and love like you did. God, allow us not to see the sin, but rather see the person that you died for. Allow us to see the person that you love and, and we're willing to sacrifice your body for God. Allow us to see people, Lord, that need you. God, allow us to bring truth to them. The truth is what? That you first loved us. God, before anything, you came and you loved this world. God, you didn't judge them. You didn't condemn them. Instead, you set them free. God, thank you so much that you called us to be witnesses, Lord. Lord, forgive me if I haven't been doing enough. Lord, forgive me if I moved away from your calling that you have placed in my life. Forgive me, God, for being ashamed sometimes of sharing the gospel. God, forgive me if I haven't been preaching truth to people who need it. Lord, forgive me for shying away and, and, and putting more of my image and, and trying to be liked than preaching who you are, God. But allow me to boldly confess my faith in you to those around me, God. Not in a spirit of arrogance or selfishness or anything like that, God, but in a spirit of humility and compassion and love like Jesus did. God, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. God, I pray that it fall on good pasture tonight, God on good soil and that the fruit will begin to to grow and we'll see that fruit God in the coming weeks Lord but all for your glory all for your honor in the mighty mighty name of Jesus amen amen well thank you guys so much for being out here tonight like I said we're going to continue on in, 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 in the series and I really pray that you know be bold this week be bold this week. Just begin to ask God. Like I said, he will guide you in this truth. God, who is it that you want me to reach out to this week? Who is it that you want to put in my path this week that I can just be a love to? Not to shame, not to condemn, not to judge them, but to love on them like how you love first, God. And then invite them. Be bold. Take, it, take a step of faith. Invite Someone that you, you think, well, that person will never go to church. Well, how do you know until you ask? There's these statistics that, that when I was, I was taking this course back in the spring, it was saying that something like, I think 76% of people who are invited to church go to church. It's almost like one in every three people that you ask will, will come. 
So if you ask three people, chances are one of them will come. And then it says something like 20% of them will stay if you bring them to church. And it's like, you know, that's a lot of people we got to ask. <laughs> that's a lot of people we got to be bold and, and, and share our faith. Because that's what we're called to, to be witnesses, to be disciples, to go into the ends of the world and, and preach the gospel, preach the good news of who Jesus Christ is. Anyways, one thing to highlight, um, I think they mentioned in the video, uh, baptisms, if you haven't been baptized yet and you're interested in that, October 6th, we're going to have a service. Um, you can sign up online or you can talk to me directly. Secondly, there's a concert happening uh, this Saturday at the uh, Daystar Church um, with the Israel Hutton, and uh, he's a phenomenal worship uh, worship guy, and, and he'll be singing a lot of his songs in, in church. It's a free concert, so a group of us will we'll be going. We'll be meeting there. I think the doors open at 5:30. I highly encourage you to to um, to attend. That's something even good for to bring someone to. That you know, it doesn't have to be a, a church setting like this, but they can go and they can be ministered through through the worship. Through just say, hey, there's a free concert happening. Come check it out. That's huge. You don't you don't even have to pay. Be like, I'll I'll buy your ticket. Don't even tell them it's free. Be like, I'll buy your ticket. Bring them bring them to church. I think that's okay. I don't know. And then at the following week, we have a, uh, a session here with, with Lydia Mayer. She came last last year around this time, and it was phenomenal. She's she's insane. Like, she's she's crazy. Like, she's so anointed. She just has an anointing over her life. And people, I remember last year, like, got, got baptized in the spirit. People got ministered to. People came to Christ that weekend. It was a crazy weekend. It was so good. God was moving, and, and she has a really good ministry. I encourage you to attend the Saturday sessions, the Sunday morning, uh, regular church, and she'll be here on Sunday Sunday night as well. And again, bring someone with you. Bring bring a friend. Bring someone who, who you know that God could really uh, minister to through these events. But anyways, God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you guys out there. I think there's sandwiches and things like that. Make sure you stick around and, and hang out. Love you guys.